I give God thanks this morning. I give him thanks. I greet our pastor and apostle Andrew Henry and his wife Evangelist Julia Artuso Henry this morning. Praise God. And I greet all the people of God this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In light of, you know, Thanksgiving Sunday and Thanksgiving in general, I do have to give him thanks. I mean, the very life that I have belongs to him. Nothing that I am belongs. I don't belong to myself. The songwriter says, I'm not my own. I belong to Jesus. And I give him thanks this morning. And if, if I was to give this message or exhortation a title this morning, it would be Cry from the Grave. Judas cries, give thanks. Cry from the Grave. Judas cries, give thanks. Hallelujah. You know, it's so easy for us to begin to take things and people for granted when we have possession of them or have them around us so regularly and so often. We begin to take the value that they have for granted. And one of the things the Lord, you know, always wants us, and that's, I believe that's why he says we must always give him thanks and everything give him thanks because we can't afford to take him for granted. We can't afford to neglect the King of Kings and the very life giver who gives us breath to breathe, it gives us the strength to even get up and do what we have to do throughout the day. I mean, I might not even leave my house, but the very fact that I can even get up or even turn over on my side on my own is enough to give him thanks. There are many that need somebody to lift them. There are many that need somebody to turn them. There are many that need somebody to bathe them. But we can lift up our hands this morning. We can move our feet. We can speak. We can do everything ourselves, on, not on our own, but ourselves, because God is our strength this morning. He is our all in all, and he is what giving us that strength, that life force to do all that we can, even to work and to labor. It is him that gives us that strength. And when we're grateful, when we're thankful, that has a positive effect on our life. When we are, have a heart of gratitude at all times and in every situation have thanks because it affects our health positively. It affects our body, our relationships. Everything is affected positively when we have hearts of gratitude and a thankful heart always despite the situation, despite the circumstances. But that, that thanks should always be expressed to someone, and that someone is Jesus. It should always be expressed to him. It doesn't matter what the circumstance is. Even if you are in the valley of the shadow of death, give him thanks because he's there with you still. He'll never leave us nor forsake us because that is what he said. That is his word. And we have to be thankful even for his word, even for his promises. Because as believers, that is where I thank should always go. We should always go to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Because he's great and greatly to be praised. Amen. Just when you look over your own life and see, when you look back and look, see where the hand of God has been moving in your life, you can truly be thankful this morning and say, God, I thank you. You might have been going through it and didn't see it, but when you look back, you can say, yes, God, you were there. Your hand was in it, Lord God. I didn't understand it, but your hand was in it. You were there leading. You were there covering. You were there preserving. Even in the very midst of a storm, the storm may have been around you, but you were in the eye of the storm with Jesus where the calm is. Be thankful even in the midst of the storm. Give thanks this morning because it rightfully belongs to him. Hallelujah. The arms of flesh will always fail. We can't depend upon men. We can't depend upon humanity because humanity will always fail. But Jesus says, thank him. Put our trust in him at all times. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It's one of the most important benefits to our life is being thankful. Being thankful. Being grateful. Because that changes our very perspective of our mind. From having a temporal mindset to having an eternal mindset. Seeing beyond our circumstance. Seeing beyond our situation. This is how we can be content in every situation because we're thankful because we have all that we need in Jesus Christ. Amen? Hallelujah. This world is full of trouble and we know that this world is full of trouble. We see it every day on the news. We see it all around. We experience all type of pain and heartache and difficulties and challenges and trials and tribulations, different diversities of difficulties in life, 
physically, mentally, emotionally. So many things, disappointments, betrayal, sickness, sin itself. Life itself just comes to break us. But thanks be to God, we have a life giver named Jesus Christ. And his words are spirit and their life. He is life. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Hallelujah. So we are thankful this morning. Hallelujah. That despite the troubles of this world, we are not of this world. We're in it but not of it. And we have a Savior. We have a King. We have a Preserver. Hallelujah. That is keeping us. That is helping us to get through the various trials of life. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, Paul talks about some of the hardships that he had to go through. He says, Five times I received at the hands of the Jews 40 lashes less than one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. At night and the day, I was adrift at sea. On frequent journeys in danger from rivers, danger from robbers, danger from his own people. Danger from Gentiles, danger in the city, danger in the wilderness, danger at sea, danger from false brothers, in toil and hardship, through many sleepless nights, in hunger and thirst, often without food, in cold and exposure. And apart from other things, there's the daily pressure on him, the anxiety from all the churches. And Paul's saying, look, I went through all of this. But yet Paul is saying, I have an eternal mindset. I look beyond all of this. I look forward to that prize of the high calling of Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Because Paul was thankful. He was grateful to God for what God has done for God changed his life and he gave his life back to him. He gave his life back to the Lord and served him. And despite all the hardships, despite all the difficulties, despite all his experiences, he had a heart of gratitude. Hallelujah. Are you grateful this morning? Are you grateful this morning? In the text we read, we read about Judas, and we all know about Judas. We've all read and heard about Judas. He was a disciple of Jesus Christ. He was a treasurer. But he was the one, unfortunately, that the scripture said there would be one that would betray our Lord and Savior. And Judas happened to be that one. He walked with Jesus. He heard all the teachings. He hung around him. I'm sure he experienced some of the, the effects of the prayers that he would have been prayed for like the other um, apostles. He was in the very presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But yet, the end of Judas was a disastrous one. Due to remorse and regret and all that torment he was dealing with internally, he ended up taking his own life because he couldn't stand what he had done to innocent blood, to Jesus Christ. And instead of running to Christ for forgiveness, he ran into the arms of the enemy and got lost in that depression, got lost in that self-pity and hung himself. And not only did he hang himself, but that when that body fell, the scripture says that his body burst open and his intestines, his entrails burst out. It was a devastating and hard blow. And when we think about thankfulness and being thankful, it's an invitation for us to trust God who gives generously. To trust God who is always having our best interests at heart. It's an offer, it's an invitation to have our minds change, our perspective change on life when we can be thankful to God. And Judas is our example today. He's that voice crying from the grave telling us, don't be like me. Give thanks for what you have. Brethren, we have the Holy Ghost this morning, the Spirit of God, the nature of Christ living in us. And if we don't have him, we have that opportunity to receive this morning. And we need to give God thanks this morning. Let me tell you something. Any one of us can fall from grace just like Judas fell from grace. He was in the very presence of the Master, the very presence of the, the King of kings and Lord of lords. But look at the demise of Judas this morning. We have to take stock of our life as we walk on this journey to know that none of us is faultless. Judas' eyes, the scripture says, you know, was on the money, but when our eyes are on the lust of the, the, lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life, we're drawn away. And we might physically even be in the church. We might even be in this building, but our minds and our hearts are drawn away. A move removed from Christ, removed from the very presence of the Lord. And this is why Judas fell from grace. 
Because he was in the midst, but yet his heart was somewhere else. We were learning in Bible study not to give room to the enemy, and Judas gave room. Just a little room is all it takes. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. That's all it takes, brethren. But we don't want to fall from grace this morning. But we want to be wrapped up and tied up and tangled up in grace, which is Jesus Christ himself this morning. Amen. Judas cries, give thanks this morning. He's telling us, give thanks for what you have this morning. Give thanks for salvation, which you are getting to experience this morning. If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side this morning, we would not be here. We might, I might sound like a broken record this morning, but we need to hear some things over and over again sometimes for it to get in our spirit, for it to get in our minds, for it to get in our hearts. Because not one of us is too strong or strong enough to stand on our own. But we need the Jesus Christ to stand with us and in us, to stand up in us and allow him to stand up in us. So that we can stay in the way. We don't want to fall from grace. As Judas fell from grace. He's crying this morning from the grave. Give thanks for what you have. Give thanks that you can walk hand in the hand with the man. Hallelujah. That still the waters that calm the sea this morning. Give thanks. Hallelujah. Look at his life. Judas saying, look at my life. I walked with him, I sat with him, I ate with him. But look at my end. We need to understand that there's so much we truly have to be thankful for. And not just verbally thankful, but living a life that expresses that gratitude to God. It's very easy for us to talk about being thankful, to talk about being loving, to talk about being giving. But the scripture tells us that it's not the hearers of the word that are blessed, but the doers of the word. And we have to do, we have to walk in the way. We have to walk in the way and stay in the way so we don't fall from grace. We have to look at the life of Judas and take it seriously and say, you know what, if I'm not careful, this could happen to me. Think about the many times, Brent, that we have betrayed Jesus. The many times that we've stepped away and done our own thing. The many times that we say, you know what, Lord, you're taking too long. I got to get this done myself. The, the times that we've taken other counsel rather than the counsel of the Holy Ghost. That's a betrayal of our master. That's a betrayal of the loyalty that we say we have. But yet we're still here this morning. By the grace of God. By the grace of God, which is Jesus Christ. He is grace expressed. Hallelujah. I said the other day, grace is spelled with five letters, G-R-A-C-E in the name of Jesus, J-E-S-U-S, five letters. Jesus is grace as we've been taught. Let us not take grace as just some inanimate object, but it is Christ himself. And we can be wrapped up and tied up and tangled up in him, but we must be in him and he in us for us to stay in the way. Amen. Hallelujah. Another thing that I learned from the life of Judas so that you can see is that professing Christ doesn't mean that we're truly his. Professing Christ Jesus does not mean that you and I are truly his. We can see that Judas, you know, he claimed to profess Christ. He was a follower of Jesus. He was an apostle. He claimed to be an apostle. He followed. He was a treasurer. Everywhere Jesus went, he went with him as a loyal apostle would. But at the end, there was that betrayal because it wasn't so much about what he said or what he did, but it was about the content of his heart. And ultimately, it's about the content of our heart. You know, we worship him with our lips, but many times our hearts are far from him. They're far from him. And with all the teaching we've been getting, especially of late, brethren, God is saying, come up higher. I don't want your hearts far from me anymore. You see, the, the, the result of Judas is exactly what happens when our heart is far from him. Because we can be in the midst of him, but still be far from him. I can be hearing what he's saying, but still be far from him. I could be seeing all the wonderful works he's doing, but still be far from him. And I myself could even be used to the wonderful works, but still be far from him. 
but I don't want to be far from him. The scripture teaches us what happens when we're far from him. He says, on that great and glorious day, I'm going to stand before him. And he's going to say, depart from me, I know you not. Look, I'm going to say all these wonderful things that I did in his name. I healed, I delivered, I gave to the poor, I, 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 I built houses, I built churches, I, I helped so many people. But he's going to turn around and say, I didn't know you. You were far from me. Though you were in the midst of my people, though you were hearing the word coming forth, though you were being taught, though you had opportunity after opportunity after opportunity, you were far from me. You never heeded my call. We never came forth. We never laid down our pride and self-denial. We never put it down because we were looking to establish ourselves. We we're looking to try to live off of the, the glory off of Jesus Christ. But the Lord says that he doesn't share his glory with anybody else. He will not share it with anybody else. So how can I or you try to steal or build up off the glory of God for my own benefit? It cannot work that way. And it will never work that way. Because when we try to do things of ourselves, we'll end up being tormented internally. We'll end up in self-pity and, and, and depression. Because anything that we pursue on our own, ultimately, will never work. It will never work. In the beginning, it might seem like it's going the right way. But as the scripture says, the, 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 right, the way of a man seems what? It seems right. It seems right. So in the beginning, it might look like it's going well. It look like everything is under wraps. You have everything under control. But the end thereof is destruction. It's destruction. There's a destruction at the end. And Jesus is telling us, look, stop in your tracks. Take heed to my word. We need to look to the hills from whence cometh our help this morning and accept that help. Receive the help of Jesus Christ. Heed the call of Jesus this morning. Don't be one that is far from, away from Christ. Don't be one that is professing Christ as Lord, but yet living as though I am a, a free agent. If Jesus is my Lord and Master, that means I must be his servant. I am not my own. I can't do anything unless my Master says do. And my Master says do or don't do, I must take heed because I am not my own. If we understand slavery, a slave couldn't do what they wanted to do. A slave had to do the bidding of their Master. And everything they did was to glorify their master, to exalt their master, to make their master look good. And if we're children of God, if we're slaves to Jesus Christ, if we say he is our master, our Lord, our teacher, then we must do everything to please him this morning. We must be obedient because ultimately that's what he's looking for. Obedience. He says if we love him, then we must obey him. If we love him, obey him. Look how simple that is. If we love him, obey. Now, the journey isn't simple because, yes, there's a struggle, but that's why he gave us his spirit. And he says his spirit is going to lead us into all truth. His spirit is going to shape us and form us and mold us into his very image and likeness. And he'll give us the strength to endure all the hardships and the trials and tests because all of that is there to help our faith grow and help us grow into that individual that God has called us to be from before the foundation of the world. But we must allow Jesus Christ in to do that work. We must avail ourselves. You know, one of the things I've learned about, you know, when I think about relationships, you have to make yourself vulnerable in a relationship if you really want that relationship to work. You've got to be willing to put it all out there, the good and the bad and the ugly. Put it all out there because you want this relationship to work. You want there to be a bond and a connection. So I've got to open up myself. As Christ, he already opened up himself. He poured out his very self. He made himself vulnerable. He left glory and walked among us. And he poured out, he bled and died for us. And he's saying, look, I made myself vulnerable for you. He's saying, look, make yourself vulnerable for me. Present yourself as a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable in his sight. That we may know what is that good? How we can know? We only can know when we avail ourselves because when Christ can come in, he'll begin to reveal. And then that relationship will begin to grow. There's a reciprocation as we make ourselves vulnerable and take a step. He takes another step. He said, draw close to me and I will draw close to you. It's all about what am I going to do? Jesus is going to reciprocate everything that I do. He's going to reciprocate everything. If you're going to draw close, he's going to draw close. If you're going to pray, if you're going to talk to him, he's going to talk right back to you. 
Whatever it is, if you're going to worship him and you're going to pour out before him, he's going to pour right into you. He is going to reciprocate all that you do because he's a giver of good gifts. And he's always looking to give good gifts to his children. But are we available? Are we availing ourselves? Are we making ourselves vulnerable to him? Are we exposing ourselves to him? Yes, we might say, tell ourselves, yeah, he knows all about me already. Yes, he does. But he wants me to come to him and say, look, I am a liar. I have the tendency to lie. Lord God, I need you to fix it. I need you to help me not lie anymore. You said, Lord God, I must speak truth and speak it on the inward part, oh God. Help me, Lord God, not to be a liar anymore. Help me not to be a thief. Help me not to be a fornicator out there sleeping around. Help me not to do it anymore. Whatever it is, Lord, help me not to do it. Come into my situation. If Judas had just said, Jesus, come into my situation. Forgive me, Lord. That end would not have been destruction. But we were taught to call Jesus into our situation, no matter what it looks like. And we need to give God thanks today that we can even call on the name of Jesus Christ to help us in our situations, to help us in some of our messes that we have even gotten ourselves into. Because many times we make some decisions that, go, that boldly go against what God has said not to do. And we get ourselves in some situations, but still the compassion and the mercy of God is still being extended to us. And he says, look, even though you didn't obey me, even though you betrayed me and did your own thing, I'm going to turn it around for your good. I'm going to take you up. I'm going to make you into another vessel. I'm going to turn it around for your good so that I can get the glory out of your life. You can't get out of this mess, but I can take you out of this mess. I can fill you again. I can mend you. Hallelujah. I can make you into another vessel this morning. You do, your end does not have to be destruction, but it can be peace and life. Hallelujah. Abundant life, hallelujah. Abundant living in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. We need to give him thanks. Judas is saying, give thanks for what you have. Hallelujah. Have you ever told anybody to give thanks? You, you're looking at the life. You look at what they have. And sometimes you, you would you'd wish sometimes you had what they had. And sometimes you see they're being ungrateful. They're not appreciating what they have. Brethren, sometimes I believe we don't appreciate what we have in Jesus Christ. We take everything for granted. And sometimes we want to treat Jesus like he's a genie that we can just rub him the right way and he just give us what we want. But that's not how God works. He's there to provide all our needs, not our wants. But he's saying, look, if you really want to know me, you've got to give yourself to me. Because anything outside of relationship is going to end up in destruction. Anything outside of relationship with Jesus Christ is not going to get us to glory. We can always sing, I'm so near to my heavenly home, but do, am I near to Christ? Is Christ in me and I in him? Can Christ himself call me friend? Because it's not even about me calling him friend, because I can call him friend all I want, but is he calling me friend? Is he saying that I am his servant this morning? I don't know about you, but I want him to be able to call me friend. I want to know that he can say I am his it doesn't matter how much I can say that he is my Lord, he is my Lord, he is my Lord. The scripture says not everybody that says what? Lord, Lord. So I can say Lord, Lord all I want. Is Christ in me and I in him? Does he call me his own this morning? And the joys that you will share once we do come together with him. As you tarry with Christ, none other. There's a, there's a joy, there's a level, there's a grace. There's, a, there's a, 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 a such awesomeness in Christ that we can experience if we just stay with him. Hold on to him. Hold on to his word. Because we don't want to fall out of the way. We don't want to be walking outside of the way. We don't want to be blinded in the way thinking that all is well. Thinking that I'm walking in the spirit of truth, but I'm walking in the spirit of error. We don't want to be just professing Christ and not living Christ. Titus 1.16 says, They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him, being abominable and disobedient and unto every good work reprobate. Liberated minds from God. When we continue to disobey, we become liberated from God. Doing our own thing walking our own way. And when we are liberated from God, we are a playground for the enemy. Remember, it, all it takes is a little room. A little leaven, it leavens the whole lump. 
I've baked bread many times and I see how that dough will start off so small and you leave it for a little bit and that dough will just swell and swell and swell and you wouldn't believe that such tiny little grains of leaven can swell up something to that magnitude. And that's the same thing that happens when we let sin, when we let our selfish ways get in the way. It doesn't happen right away. But little by little by little by little, that leaven will swell. And before you know it, we're realizing it's too late. By the time we even realize it, it's too late. Because it's progressive. It's over time. It's little by little by little. Little by little. But we have to ask the Lord to open up our eyes, spiritual eyes, to help us discern our way, to make sure that we're in the way, the way that he's called us to. Because any one of us can end up like Judas if we're not careful. We don't want to end up like Judas. We love to talk about how he betrayed him. And we f some of us even feel good when we talk about him because we feel like, well, I would never betray Jesus like that. I would never do something like that to Jesus. But many times we have betrayed him. Many times we've turned our back on him. Many times we've denied him. Many times we've said we don't know him just by our actions. Many times we've given him over just by going another way, following someone else's counsel rather than the counsel of the Lord. But we don't want to end up like him. The cry from the grave from Judas this morning is give thanks. We need to give him thanks. Give Jesus Christ thanks for what we have. Salvation. Let me tell you something. If we didn't have salvation, we'd be men most miserable this morning. We'd have no hope this morning. Where would you turn to? Where would I turn to? Who could we turn to this morning if it had not been for the Lord Jesus Christ on our side this morning? Where could we go? Where could we go? Is any idol worth giving up Christ, giving up eternity for? Is any man, any woman worth giving up eternity for? What is worth giving up eternity, giving up Christ for? Absolutely nothing is worth it. Nothing can equate Jesus Christ. He's more precious than silver. He's more precious than gold. There's absolutely nothing that can compare to what we have in Jesus Christ this morning. And only he can be trusted this morning. Don't put your trust in the arms of flesh this morning. Don't put it in horses and chariots. Don't even put it in your job this morning. Let me make it clear. I know many of us might have even experienced it over our life, but we could get up Monday morning if the Lord spare our life, get called into the office or get a phone call and hear, or we have to let you go. Where would we go at that point? Who we're going to trust in at that point? It can happen to any one of us at any point in time. But who are we trusting in this morning? Who are we trusting in this morning? Walking with Jesus, talking with Jesus, praying all the right prayers, saying all the right things, talking all the right Christian lingo, dressing the part, looking the part, involved in every service. But is my heart in the hands of Jesus? Am I truly walking with him? So I'm going to say hand in hand we walk each day, hand in hand along the way. Hallelujah. Straying thus. Hallelujah. Walking thus, I cannot stray. Hallelujah. Hand in hand with Jesus. I want to encourage us this morning, not only to give thanks, but to let your hand stay in the hand of Jesus this morning. If you have been walking with him, continue to walk with him. No matter the trials, no matter the situations, no matter the pressures that come in life. Because it's all a part of this journey. This road is a hostile road. When you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it's hostility along the way. It will come from every side. But Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He says, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. He says, look, even if you're in the very valley of the shadow of death, and we may have many valleys that we go through, he says, look, I am still with you. The songwriter says, standing somewhere, what? In the shadows you'll find Jesus. Sometimes he's not only standing in light, but he's still there in the shadows. He's there. In him we live and move and have our being. We need not trust anybody else this morning. We need not look to anybody else this morning, but we need to have hearts of gratitude this morning 
for not just what he did over 2,000 years ago, but what he's just done for us even this very moment, a minute ago. The fact that he allowed me to inhale and exhale. The fact that he allowed you to even inhale and exhale just now. Somebody in this world just now may have just taken their last breath in the very moment that you and I just inhale and exhale. But the Lord has allowed our heart to keep pumping and he's allowed us to take in and exhale and inhale another breath. We need to really understand the, the, the magnitude of who God is in our life and the fact that if it really isn't for him we would not be here if it really isn't for him we wouldn't even be in our right mind some of the things that we've gone through we would have gone mad already we'd been in Douglas already if we did not have Christ Jesus we would have gone crazy and we would have ended up like Judas we would have taken our own life because we can't stand it anymore we can't deal with it anymore it's too much to carry. It's too much to bear. But thanks be to God that we have a burden bearer named Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God that we have one that we can run to. Thanks be to God that there is still room at the cross this morning. That we can come before him and say, Lord, my master, this is too much for me to bear. I need you to help me carry this load. I need you to help me carry this load. I need you to deliver me, to set me free, to touch me this morning. Whatever it is that you need of him this morning, he has it just for you this morning. I might not know what it is and I might not know what you need, but he knows all about it. He says, come to me, all you that are heavy laden. Your burden heavy laden, come and I'll give you rest. And that rest isn't rest from trials and tribulations, but that's peace in Christ. Knowing that even when the trials come, even when the failures come, even when everyone else has left, and you're the only one standing, Jesus said, I'm still standing with you. I always see in my mind the father of the prodigal son standing out there with his, just looking out for his son to return. And I thank God that Jesus, he is that father this morning. That even when we find, we leave and find ourselves eating with pigs and doing all type of things that we would say, I would never do that. That when we come to ourselves and say, I need to go back to my father. I need to go back to my daddy. I, I was in a good place. And even if he won't receive me as a son, I'll become a slave, a servant. But Jesus is not looking at us like that. He just wants us to come. And when we come, he's not even, he's not going to point a finger. He's not going to judge. He's not going to, he's not going to say, I told you so. He's going to say, my child has returned. My child has returned. Rejoice. Put on a robe on him. Put on shoes. Hallelujah. Put them in the best. Let's celebrate and rejoice because my son, my daughter has returned. Give thanks because my son or daughter has returned. We need to give God thanks this morning. If he wasn't merciful, if he wasn't gracious, the amount of times that we even sin in one day sometimes. Sometimes we're so rebellious that we do some things so many times in one day, but yet still the grace of God. Yet still Jesus. He stands at the door and knocks. Just as sin crouches at the door, Jesus is standing at the door. Who are we going to let in this morning? Who are we going to let in this morning? Hallelujah. Judas is telling us, give God thanks. Reflect on our lives and give God thanks for what we have. And let us come up higher in our walk with him. Live a life that reflects that gratitude, that thankfulness unto the Lord. Let us not just worship him with our lips anymore, but let our hearts be in the hand of Christ. Let it be pliable in the hand of Jesus Christ, that he can shape it and mold it and use it for his glory. Because it's all about him. It's all about him this morning. I know that, yes, we come to Christ and we want to be saved, but it's all about Jesus. He wants to be in a relationship with you and I. And it doesn't matter if I'm in the church and I've fallen or if I'm outside of the church and I've fallen. He's saying, come. He's saying, come. Come, let's reason. Let's talk about it. Tell me all about it. Because I can wash you. I can make you clean. I will restore you. I will set you back in the way. I'll put you on a rock to stay. Hallelujah. And you will continue in the way. 
we make this journey a lot harder than we need to in a lot of ways. And a lot of times it's because we don't trust Jesus the way we should. We don't invest and work on that relationship the way we should. And we find ourselves in a lot of mess. But I pray that we would get focused on building that relationship. Building that relationship by communicating with him because that's what prayer really is. It's talking to him. Telling him your heart. Not just what you want, but your needs. And also telling him what place he has in your life. Because it's all, it's an it's a introspection. When you go in that closet, that prayer closet. And if you don't, I encourage you to go in a prayer closet or a place of isolation with just you and Jesus. And let him do that spiritual examination. As you pour out, he'll do a spiritual examination. To show us ourselves because we need to see ourselves. We see everybody else and everything else, but we don't really see ourselves. And in these days, we really need to see ourselves a lot more. We need to see where we're erring and where we can improve. And we need to see where our relationship is with Christ. And stop trying to focus so much on what someone else is doing. Pray for other people. Uplift other people. Encourage them. But you need to make sure, we need to make sure that we are in right standing with God. And that we are walking in the will of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, because Judas is telling us, give thanks unto the King of kings and Lord of lords. We don't want to end up like Judas this morning. We don't want to stray. We don't want to be far from him, but yet in his very midst. What an oxymoron. I can be right there beside Jesus, but yet far from him. And think that because I see him, that I'm with him. But in reality, I'm not really with him because my heart is not with him. And if my heart is not with him, then I'm not really with Christ. But we don't want to be on this journey like that. Thinking that we're in right standing. Thinking that I am in a relationship with Jesus Christ. Thinking that I'm in the way. Thinking that I'm doing everything right. Thinking and thinking and thinking about everything that seems to be going the way that it should. But let us not walk in that way that seems right this morning because that way will only lead to destruction praise God the altar is open if anybody would like to come up for prayer this morning but I'm just going to ask everyone to stand praise God because the Lord is good you know we sang that song his goodness is running after us and you know when I think about myself and the fact that I have not been perfect and I've done wrong but yet his goodness is still running after me He's still pursuing me. He still calls me his own. And he still calls you his own this morning. His goodness is still running after you this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I give him thanks that he ever thought of you and I. I keep hearing that line of that song ringing in my spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you ever thought of me with all the billions of people in this world. But the Lord still thought of you and I. In all our mess and everything, and we could have been at the, the ends of the earth, but yet he still thought of you and I. He still considered you and I. He says, look, you're graven in the very palm of my hands this morning. He says, when I died, I died just for you. Is anybody thankful this morning? Is anybody grateful that he ever thought of you and I this morning? Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, of the truth that you ever thought of us. We love to hear about the blessings, but Lord, we didn't even deserve your love. We didn't deserve your mercy, your compassion, oh God. But thank you, Lord, for ever thinking about us, oh God. And Lord God, we want to leave this house today with hearts of gratitude. Hearts focused on you, Lord God, and all that you have done and all that you are, oh Lord God. Because it's not just about what you do, but who you are. And Lord God, we thank you for being who you are this morning. Because if you had not been you this morning, God, we would not be here. If you didn't love us the way you love us, we would not be here. 
Hallelujah. The very breath that we breathe, it belongs to you, Lord God. It is a gift to us. And we stand here in your very presence only because you thought of us this morning. Lord God, I pray that, Lord God, as we continue to seek you, Lord God, that you create in us, cultivate in us hearts of gratitude. Hearts that are always ready and willing to give thanks. Give thanks in the good times. Giving thanks in the bad times. Giving thanks in the, 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 the uncertain times, Lord God. Giving thanks always unto you, Lord God. Because you don't just deserve it, it belongs to you, Lord yes, God. Lord. Everything that we could see in this earth, you created. You spoke everything into existence, oh God. Lord God, you provided the right amount of oxygen that we could even breathe and be alive this morning. Everything is set perfect to a T. Where this planet is set at the right distance from the sun to allow life to even thrive. Hallelujah. Yes. And it's only because of you, Lord God, why the, the heat of the sun does even consume us. But Lord God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. For all you've done and who you are this morning. Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end. King of kings, Lord of lords. You are the great I am that I am. Wonderful counselor, prince of peace. Mighty God, healer, deliverer. Hallelujah refuge and strength the very present help in trouble our help from ages past hallelujah our anchor our rock hallelujah jesus our shield and our buckler hallelujah you are our preserver this morning hallelujah you are our keeper hallelujah jesus hallelujah you are our life force oh lord god you are our coverer this morning oh god Extend the borders of your garment this morning, Lord God, and cover us, Lord Jesus. Extend the borders of your garment this morning, Lord God, and cover us in the name of Jesus. And let us stay under your covering, O Lord God, with hearts of gratitude, O Lord Jesus. Let our hearts not drift far from you, Lord God, but to stay in you, Lord God. Let us be wrapped up and tied up and tangled up in you. Let us be lost in you, Lord God. Let it be you, Christ, in us, the hope of glory. Let us be able to say like Paul, it's no longer I that liveth, but Christ that liveth in me and through me. Hallelujah. Help us, Lord God, to get to that place where we're constantly pursuing you, Lord God, with all diligence, O oh Lord God, knowing only you can fill that void in us. You have the living water, Lord God. You have the living bread, O oh Lord God. Only you can fill that void. No one, no thing can fill that void in us. We could search and search and try to fill it, O oh God, but that void will never be satisfied with anything else but you, Lord God. So, Lord God, we thank you. Touch us right now from the crown of our heads to the soles of our feet. I pray you speak to everyone this morning. I pray that everyone receives something from you, Lord God. They heard your voice speak, Lord God, in some way, some fashion, some form. Your word was planted in somebody's heart, Lord Jesus, so that that word can grow and germinate and bring forth fruit, oh Lord God, in this time. Because, Lord God, we didn't choose you, as your word says. You chose us, Lord God. Even when we rejected you, Lord God, you still chose us, Lord Jesus. And you didn't choose us just to come and be religious and to be entertained, but you said you chose us to bear fruit. Yes, Lord. And that that fruit should remain, hallelujah. You said if we're connected to you as a vine and we're not bearing fruit, we're good for nothing but to be cut off and to be cast into the fire. But Lord God, we want to bear fruit in the name of Jesus Christ. Good fruit that will bring you glory so that others can taste and see. That others can taste and see and experience that you are good. And that your goodness will continue to run after them, oh Lord God. We honor you, we magnify you, we praise you, we exalt you, Lord God. Go with us as we're about to leave this house. And let our hearts and minds remain in that place of worship, that place of gratitude, that place of exalting you, Lord God, and lifting you up. And always remembering, Lord God, your, your word is not just for us to read and memorize, oh God, but it's to give us examples. It's to show us the way, Lord God, yes. to help us to avoid certain things and to keep in certain things and to follow your principles and your rules. Because you're, you sent your word to heal our diseases. Yes, you did, Lord. 
You sent your spirit to lead us into all truth. You sent your very spirit to shape us and to mold us from the inside out, oh God. Because that's why you said you're not going to write your words on stone anymore, Lord God. We're going to write them on the tables of our heart. So that that transformation can begin from within. So I pray, Lord God, today a transformation will begin from within, Lord God. Yes, Lord. As we make ourselves vulnerable to you, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, have your way in us. Revive us, refresh us, touch us again, Lord God. And help us to lay aside those things that so easily beset us. So that we can continue in the way. With you right beside us, O oh Lord God. We honor you, we thank you, we magnify you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. You're worthy, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Oh, we thank you with grateful hearts, hearts of gratitude, O oh Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. Lord God, hallelujah. We didn't even have to make it into this house this morning. There's some who were in accidents before we even came, Lord God, but we made it. You gave your angels charge over us. You let your warring angels go before us to cut and clear the way, Lord God, and we made it here only by your grace. Lord God, we are standing here only because of you, Lord God, and we thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. With grateful hearts, we thank you. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Lord God, may the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Lord, may the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. No retreat, no surrender, no retreat, no surrender. No matter what comes your way, no retreat, no surrender. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Go in the grace of God. Hallelujah.